This is problem 1418, page 600. I'll read it. A one ounce steel jacketed bullet is fired with a velocity of 2200 feet per second toward a steel plate and ricochets along the path CD with a velocity of 1800 feet per second. Uh, knowing that the bullet leaves a two inch scratch on the surface of the plate and assuming that it has an average speed of 2000 feet per second while in contact with the plate, determine the magnitude and direction of the impulsive force exerted by the plate on the bullet. So let's see, let me write down the problem number so it's on the video, 14, 18. And I'll draw the system as well. So here's the plate. The projectile or bullet comes in toward the plate, scratches the plate for two inches. And how would we know that? Well, we'd look, look at the plate after the, the bullet fired and uh, bounced off of it. So it'd be easy to see how long or how, how much distance it was in contact with the plate. So it bounces off. Here's D, here's A. Here's B and C. The angle over here is 15 degrees. The entering angle is higher. It's 25 degrees. And the velocity at A is the same as the velocity at B. It is 2200 feet per second. The velocity at D is uh, 1800 feet per second. And the velocity from B to C is 2,000 feet per second. And that's just assumed. Now, obviously, the bullet's going to actually slow down as it's going from B to C. We're just going to use this as an approximation. All right, so we want to find out the direction and magnitude of the impulsive force exerted by the plate on the bullet. Now, since the bullet is in contact with the plate and the momentum of the bullet changes, let me ask you a couple of questions about this. How does the momentum change? Well, there's an obvious direction that the momentum changes in. Let me give you a coordinate system. Here's a regular X, Y Cartesian coordinate system just like we always use. Okay? What direction is the most obvious change of momentum for this projectile? Y. Y, absolutely. Notice that the projectile had a component in this direction. Now it has a component in the opposite direction. Now, its component in this direction may or may not have changed. We don't know yet. The angle is different. In fact, it would be a good thing to calculate the components of the velocity in the x and the y direction because, remember I told you, that the equation mv1 plus uh, integral f ds uh, equals mv2. Remember I told you that this is a vector equation. So in a plane where we have two dimensions, there's actually two equations here. There's momentum in the x direction and momentum in the y direction. So two totally different equations. So let's write that down. Let's, let's expand this into the two component equations. So there will be an, in fact, let me put it over here. So x in the x direction, we'd have the uh, mass of the projectile times the velocity at a in the x direction plus the integral from B to C of whatever force. Now, if it's the x direction, then the bullet, when it's between B and C, is going to have a frictional force and also will have a normal force, right? So, in the x direction, we'll have a frictional force, but that frictional force has a direction associated with it. The velocity is in this direction. The frictional force is in this direction. So do you see why I have to plug in negative F ds? I, I'm sorry. I'm stuck in uh, chapter 13 mode. It should be dt. I wrote it up here with s and I apologize. Okay. So anyway, then the momentum after the impact with the plate would be uh, mass of the bullet times the velocity at D in the X direction. Now you might look at this and say, well that doesn't look right because you got A to D here, but you got B to C here. Well, let me ask you a question. Does this frictional force act from A to B? Or does it act from C to D? No. In fact, 
It only acts to change the X momentum while the bullet's in contact with the plate between B and C. Now, a way you could look at this is that really, this is the velocity just before impact B. This is the velocity just after impact C. And so then these points are much closer than I've suggested. Okay. But anyway, that's the X component equation. How about the Y component equation? Well, in the y direction, you're going to have some velocity at A in the y direction. Plus, we have to add up from B to C. What force? Well, the normal force that acts over whatever time the bullet's in contact with the plate. Okay. Equals the mass times the velocity at D in the y direction. Now, you might look at this and say, well, velocity at A in the y direction is in the negative direction. Why didn't you put a negative sign here like you did with the force? The reason I didn't do that is because I'm going to plug that in later. I know the velocity has a negative y component, so VAY is in fact itself negative. I don't have to put a, a negative momentum term into the equation. That would just be confusing. Make sense? Okay. Now notice also we can't really say anything about how the frictional force or the norm, normal force vary uh, as the, the bullet goes from B to C. We have to get averages. In fact, we were asked to find uh, the average uh, impulsive force. So let's see, determine the magnitude and direction of the impulsive force. Well, they didn't, they didn't make it clear, but there's no way we can do anything except for find the averages of these forces. Now let me ask you a question. You're used to writing something like this, F equals mu n. Do you think that's really relevant here? More particularly, do you think that the normal force has some relationship to the weight of the bullet? I mean, this is something we always do, isn't it? You have a package sitting on the ground, you look at the package, there's some normal force, there's some weight force. Would we do that here? Why or why not? How many people think you should? How many people think there's no relationship to the weight? Okay, Mr. Nunn, what do you think? I think it's negligible. You think what? I think it's negligible. I agree, I think it's negligible. I think that the amount of normal force required to get the bullet to change direction in the fraction of a second that it's in contact with this plate is so high, I think that force is so high, the weight of this bullet is going to be negligible. There's no point in even discussing it. So I think that this doesn't matter. Basically, this is something that happens very frequently in this type of problem, that an impulse a momentum problem, there are certain forces that act over the period of time, but they're so small, their their impulse, in other words, the, the addition of that force over time, is so small we just toss it out. Okay? So you're right. I don't think there's any need for this. Is there any need to relate the friction force to the normal force? Not really, because all they've asked us to do is find the friction force and the normal force. Uh, and so I think there's going to be a lot more going on than just friction anyway. So I don't think I'd try to even claim that there's some coefficient of friction between the two. If you guys ever watch uh, Mythbusters, there's a show where they have uh, a, a police revolver mounted and a handgun on the other side facing each other, because apparently there's a story of a, a, a robber or a, a criminal shooting at a policeman and the, the robber's bullet went into the, re the revolver of the policeman. Okay, so the, the policeman's gun literally stopped the bullet. Okay? And so they tried to reproduce it. Ended up they did. But I don't know that you'd say it was really a bullet by the time it was stopped. I mean there was parts of it everywhere, you know, it was you couldn't even recognize it unless you knew what it was. It didn't certainly didn't look like one anymore. So I don't think that this is something we're particularly interested in. I think we're more interested in rearranging these equations because we should have enough information. I mean, think about it. We know the velocities before and after impact. We don't know what to plug into the equation yet, but we do know the velocities and angles. So we can come up with these as numbers. We also should be able to come up with some amount of time that the bullet spins in contact with the plate. Now if you think about this, this almost looks like it would go towards chapter 13 where we have force acting over distance. But we were told that while the plate is in or while the bullet's in contact with the plate, it looks like a tunnel. Oh, here it is. The velocity is 2,000 feet per second. So couldn't we figure out the amount of time that the bullet's in contact with the plate? And if we could do that, 
couldn't we then say, well, we know the, the frictional force and the normal force will vary as the bullet moves across the plate, but we're just going to get averages so that we can pull these outside of the envelope. So what I'm saying is, can't we do something like this? Can't our equations become MVAX plus, or well, better yet, minus the frictional force delta T equals MVDX? Couldn't we do something like that? Because this amount of time we can find. In fact, let's just go ahead and do it. How much time does the bullet spend in contact with the plate? That's pretty easy to figure out. We'll just take the distance of 2 inches and divide it by 2,000 feet per second. Notice we have units of length and units of, units of time. The units of length will ultimately cancel. The unit of time will end up in the middle. <coughs> so we'll have time for this thing. So uh, let's see. There's uh, 1 foot per 12 inches. So grab your calculators, please, and tell me how much time the bullet is in contact with the plate. So take 2 divided by 2,000, which is 1,000, divided by 12. So basically you need to take 1 over 12,000. What do you get? And I know this is off the video, so I'm going to erase it and move it down. How much time? 8.33 to the negative fifth. Thank you. So 8.33 times 10 to the negative fifth seconds, a very brief moment in time, which is not a surprise. So there's the delta T. That's the amount of time that the bullet's in contact. Well, can we rearrange this then and say, well, the frictional force is what we're interested in. So I'll simply take that to the other side. I'll take the final momentum to the opposite side, have MVAX less VDX, and divide by delta T. If you can't do the algebra that quickly, it's okay, but you should practice it so you can. And hopefully you won't make a mistake. Sometimes I do. It looks like that's okay. This is a delta. So really all I have to do now in order to find the frictional force is figure out the velocity at A in the X direction and the velocity at D in the X direction. But before I do that, I need this space. So let me go ahead and convert the other equation uh, as well. Notice all I'm going to do is pull the normal force out of the integral. So this would be an N delta T term. So if I solve for that normal force, it would come out this way. N equals M V D Y less the AY, because I'm going to take this term to the other side, divided by delta T. Okay. Notice it's VAX less VDY and VDY less VAY. Why the, the opposite order? Well, that's a side effect from the fact that the frictional force acts in the negative x direction. Okay. All right, can I erase this bit here? Is that okay? Yeah. So now what we need to do is find VAX. In fact, we need to find VAX, VAY, VDX, and VDY. But that shouldn't be too bad. You tell me. You know this will be VA, but do I need to multiply by sine or cosine to find the X component? Cosine. Or cosine. That's right. So cosine, 25 degrees. So this is... 2200 feet per second multiplied by the cosine of 25 degrees. So, what do we get for our velocity um, at A in the x direction? While you're doing that, I'm going to write down the rest of the equations and have you plug them in as well. The A y. Sure. 
this is what am I doing here? X, we've got that. Uh, oh, I know what I'm doing. That's right. Okay, so Okay, so if you guys will give me answers for all these. Now notice VAY is the only component of velocity that's negative. VAX, VDX, VDY, all those are positive directions. VAY is the only one I had to stick a negative sign on. So VAX is how much? 1993.8 to 7. Okay, thank you. Somebody else, VAY? 929.76. 929.76. Thank you. Someone else? VDX? 1783.67. Okay. 38.1 again? 67. 67. Thank you. Somebody else? The last one, VDY. 465.87. Okay, so there are all of the velocities that we need in order to solve this. Now, I'm out of space uh, up here, so let me just get rid of this bit. We don't need it anymore. Uh, we really don't need this either. So let's let's work on the frictional force equation. So the frictional force would be equal to the mass. What mass? What, are we, what mass are we talking about? Of the bullet, all right? It's the mass of the bullet. So how much was the mass of the bullet? Uh, it's one ounce. So an ounce is a sixteenth of a pound mass. Does that make sense? There's 16 ounces per pound. VAX, we've got that, it's right here, 1993.87. VDX, we've got, it's right here. It's 17.3, I'm sorry, 1738.67, and that is feet per second. We have to divide this by delta T. I've erased the delta T, but it was 8.33 times 10 to the negative fifth seconds, if I remember correctly. Is that right? So what do we have? We have pound mass feet per second squared. Is that a force? Yeah. Yep. That is a force. A pound mass is not a force, but a pound mass foot per second squared is a force. So we have force. It's not force we're used to using. So let's convert it. Let me move the seconds over so all this will fit. In fact, let me move the time over. 8.33 times 10 to the negative fifth seconds. We're used to pounds force, so 32.2 pound mass feet per second squared units are one pound force. And all I've done is plug numbers into that symbolic equation, so now we can get rid of it. Notice the pound mass go away, the feet per second squared go away, and we'll be left with pounds force. I think this is going to be a big, large number or a small number. Put it this way, I don't think I want to be holding that plate when the bullet hits. So let's find out. Remember, we're dividing by something that is 10 to the negative fifth. So yeah, I expect a big number. So plug it in your calculators, please. Let's see what we've got. need to figure out a pause button for the video, but at least this way, if you're watching the video, you have nothing better to do than to go along with us. So. 5,944. 5, yeah. I don't think we care about the 0.35 right now. I certainly wouldn't want to be holding it on the plate, and that's just the frictional force. That's just this force, right? It hit with a force of three tons. Okay. I do not want to hold it. Now, I'm, I'm scared to calculate the normal force, all right? But, but let's do it. So the normal force in would be the same 16th pound mass. VDY, well, VDY is 400 
uh, 65.87 less VAY, but VAY is a negative thing. I forgot to put the negative sign over here, I'm sorry. So it's negative 929.76, and I'm probably off the video, but this is just feet per second like it was before. We have to divide by the amount of time that it's in contact with the plate, that's 8.33 times 10 to the negative fifth seconds. We need our conversion factor again, 32.2 pound mass feet per second squared for every pound force. Again, pound mass feet per second squared just go away. So in fact, what we're doing here is we're adding, right? 465.87 plus 929.76. So how much normal force is applied to the plate? A whole lot. Let's find out how much. And how bad can it be? This is just a sixteenth pound mass. It's just a one ounce bullet. Okay, I got thirty-two thousand five hundred and twenty. Anyone second that? 32,000 pounds force? So 16 tons. That's how hard the bullet hits in the Y direction. This was a glancing blow. Okay, this was not a straight on attack. This was a glancing blow. Okay, can you see why bullets are deadly? They hit with a whole lot of force over a very short period of time. So in other words, their impulse, uh, their impulse of force is extremely high. Okay, this is a lot worse than hitting your, your, yourself with a hammer. Okay. It's much, much worse. Okay, any questions?